Numbers 19, 14 through 17. When someone dies in a tent, this is the law. Everyone who enters the tent and everyone who is already in it is ritually unclean for seven days. Now, seven days is probably a is given period here for most uncleanliness. It's most likely after seven days, if they were to catch something that spread, some disease or sickness, it probably most likely would have showed within seven days. So it's a safe period for them not to to be removed. We know from modern now that contact with the dead body can cause, we know that there's bugs and things that involved with it that can cause um, one to spread this thing. We so, but this was this was in, in contact with any dead body. This was whether it was burying them, any contact whatsoever would have made them set apart for seven days. If they came across it, set apart for seven days. If they came to a tomb, set apart for seven days. If they went to mourn at a tomb, set apart for seven days. Any contact with any place that would have had any dead. Now, this is most likely just a person, not necessarily contact with the animal, just a person. And uh, we see, uh, spiritually speaking, that death is being without Christ, without life. And that is a spiritual uncleanliness. We are only made clean when we receive the blood of Christ. And that makes us live to where we're clean and we can be holy for Him. And every open vessel which has no covering tied over it is unclean. So we, and this is most likely vessels that contain food or something. It wasn't just, it would have been something to store. It wouldn't have been vessels of rocks. That would have been pointless. It would have been food. And with it being uncovered, most likely it could have gained mold. They didn't understand this, but God knew. Because God has foresight and knows all. So this was the, it was declared unclean so that they wouldn't catch and eat the mold and die. So if it was left uncovered, God ordered them not to eat it because this would have caused possible death. In the open, anyone who touches someone killed with a weapon or someone who has died naturally or anyone who touches a human bone or a grave is unclean for seven days. Okay, I mentioned that in an earlier verse. For such uncleanliness, they must take some of the ash from the burnt mass of purification offering and add fresh water to it in the, a vessel. Okay, the vessels mentioned earlier may be in reference to this as well, where they put ashes and fresh water in it. For purification purposes, these ashes are remnant of what was for the burnt, the sacrifices, the sin offerings. It's what's left. So these are here to cause them to be clean. Um, when we are looking to be clean as Christians, we look to Jesus, our sacrifice. They, by doing these ashes for purification. When they became unclean, they looked to the sacrifice by using these ashes that were remaining of it. So, and water has always been a substance of purification. We know that oftentimes the effects of water and cleanliness. So, um, but they look to the offering. They look to their forgiveness. Because oftentimes uncleanliness is listed with spiritually wrong, spiritually wrong, which we see in the New Testament where they kind of see those that are unclean, the lepers and all this, as sinful. And this is why that idea comes about, because of this whole purification, sin offering, this whole idea that the Pharisees always took something to the extreme, and this is where they took that. that it's by looking to the sin offering that their cleanliness comes. That didn't mean that these lepers were living sinful. 
but that's where they took it to. We're all unclean, and we all need to come to Christ for our, our redemption and to become clean. And that's the thing the Pharisees missed, is that we all were truly unclean.